Yeah, hello, welcome to Have A Go, and I'm Alan. Today we're going to ram up the foot pattern that we prepared last week. However, this is not actually the first foot pattern that I've rammed up. As I've already cast this once, except I thought I had hit record, but I had in fact not. So, I have to cast two patterns anyway, you know, one foot for each end of the bed. So, taking advantage of that to show you the ram up with the second one. There's another double roll mould like the lathe bed. Alright, let's start shoveling. Alright, now to go Bob Marley and Whale on this. Alright, I'm using the serrated edge of the blade to um, rough out the top so that when I do the final strike, striking off with the smooth side of the blade, I don't get so much tear out because I found that if I don't do this roughing pass, then the top of the um, sand is uneven. Smooth being a relative term, I'm afraid. This will be the easy part of the rollover. The one I got the tip on for using the rough side of the saw first was Old Foundryman. I highly, highly recommend watching his videos if you're interested in metal casting because you'll learn a lot. He's very old school in that he has no time at all for people who aren't there to learn, but he knows his stuff inside, outside, backward and forward. Right. This is the roll that will suck. Gingery describes putting a couple of bars extending off your moulding bench so that you can just roll it over and catch it mid-air. To which I can only say, you must be joking. Now to see if I've been wasting my time. Fortunately no. Alright, wrap the pattern to get it out, hopefully. <sighs> My hands shake when I get nervous, so that was rather hard. Bellows. I used this, these on the first foot pattern, and I didn't get any sand inclusions. So, hopefully lightning will strike twice. Makes cleaning up the bench a bit more of a bugger, but have to do clean up anyway. Yeah, the top of the um, gate has been choked up with sand from the ramming, so... Right, for cutting the gate from the thing to the pattern, I've got some new teaspoons in the house, and I pinched the old ones. Fortunately, I only have to justify it to myself. She's a thing of beauty. Her beauty is relative.
<sighs> right, cut a basin. And that's the pattern, uh, mold for the second foot pattern. And I will now cut to me pouring the first foot pattern, or maybe this one. Depends on which one goes better. Alright, let's see if we got something worthwhile out of all of that. This was from the little vent wire I poked. Yeah, looks like a good one. I feel a bit sorry for this chisel. I bought it and all I've done with it is abuse it. Alright, we're going to start cleaning this up. Beginning with, with cutting this off on the bandsaw. Now before I begin I'll go and get my eyes and ears. That's the sprue cut off. Now, most of this I can clean up on the belt sander except for these inside edges here. So hopefully I can do these on the Alright, so that's what we've got now. Because remember kids, the bandsaw is not your friend. I'm going to smooth this surface off and once I have I can use it as a guide to get the other ones. The table to 5 degrees. Alright, see we've got a nice level surface there to work off. Didn't that move fast? Where's a good way to angle? Yeah. Knocked off all the rough stuff really quick that did. So this side will take a bit longer because there's that 
sprue, remember? So there's that big lump there that I'll need to sand off. This is the what somewhat finished pattern. Still looks a, a little bit rough, but if anyone asks, I'll say it was intentional. Make it look rustic. Okay, that needs filing. No one tell Fred at work that I did this to a chisel. Now just to clarify, that is one of the cheapest chisels they have at the shop and I bought it intentionally for that use. And that's how we make a lathe foot.